start out with one of the important things to note too is, is where we scan for the risk. So email is obviously one of those areas. So Gmail, both the email attachments as well as those message bodies. We also do look within drive files and shared drive files. Um, if you are a school that has Google Chat turned on, we also do scan within Google Chats. Um, I know that's been an area, especially on the more of the, the student state, the student uh, wellness side of things, making sure, hey, what are students putting into things? That's been a, a huge area of concern as well too. Looking over to our risk scans that are turned on and active, this is where you'll see uh, PII and PCI, which uh, both Justin and Reginald mentioned there. So I'm going to go ahead and just dive right into a, a PII, our PII risk scans here. So what we're looking at right now at a really top level here are all the various things that have gone flag of having a social security number in them. Now, there's some ways to apply various filters on top of this to really narrow down what you're looking at right away. So if I come over to this quick filters button here, one of the things I can look at are what emails were sent to outside the domain here. So now I'm looking at the outbound mail traffic here, outbound things going to the outside there um, that, that contains a social security number. So what I can do here is that I can go ahead and click into any of these here and take a look at the information. So the very first thing you'll see here is a risk detail section. This is where you can dive into the risk itself, take a look at what actually got flagged, what happened with the, with the incident. The recipients over here is going to tell you who that email got sent to both inside the domain as well as outside the domain, which is exactly what we'd expect here because we went ahead and applied that filter on top of it. So here we can see this, this administrator at auto IT cloud is not something that uh, would be an internal domain there, not an internal user. So clearly something sent to the outside here. We'll also have some sender details at a very high level. So who actually sent the email? What's the domain the email originated from? When is the timestamp of when the email actually got sent here? The source here, so it was in the email message body. The domain here again, if there were any attachments with the email, those would be listed right here. You would be able to go ahead and download those to take a look at them. And then we can also take a look at the subject of the email itself. If I go ahead and actually click in on this PII risk here, you'll see here that we actually have the thing that got flagged here. So the actual social security number here. So you see it's been bold, bolded there. So very easy to identify that. And then if you needed to further examine the particular piece of content question, you could actually download the message body right from here to further examine it. Take a look if there was anything else you need to be aware of within this specific email. From there, you also then have actions you can take on the specific risk in question. So the first action is the ability to go through and ignore risks. So this is a way to go ahead and clear things out of this risks tab market incidents as resolved, say, I've looked at this, we've reviewed this, we're, we're good to go moving forward with this, or we've talked to the end user, we have understand what happened, we've done some training with them, so we shouldn't expect to see anything from this particular user uh, moving forward here. Below that is a, a quarantine option. That can be used on the email side, but I generally see speaking see that more on the file side. Uh, on the file side, what that does is it actually initiates a transfer of ownership over to the admin of the managed methods platform, basically isolates the, isolates the file. So that can definitely really come in handy with things like inappropriate images or things like that where you need to completely isolate the file from, from the domain there. Below that, you do have the ability to restore things. You can then also delete things out of the domain entirely. So if there is something that was added to the domain that just doesn't need to be there anymore, this delete button can be very powerful and helpful as well. And then if you do have multiple people operating the platform, there is a share v email button, which allows you to share the high level information on this particular incident to somebody else. So that can be also helpful if you have someone else who's also working the platform, you wanna have them also look at what happened with the incident question here. And then very easy to navigate to your next particular incident in question here and take a look at what happened with this one. So in this one, this is actually a document here that was uh, shared to the outside in some way. Same idea here, able to see who that who that was actually being shared with to the outside, able to see where that was actually located in the student's My Drive folder. You can see when this thing, this document got last modified. In this case, it's actually a drive file here. And I can take a look too again at the PII to further examine it. So that'd be some ways to go ahead and start diving into the risks themselves here and looking at that information. And then we also do have some risk scans that are more of the student safety behavioral side of things. And that would encompass our self-harm, our toxicity risks here. And these are machine learning risks. So they're designed to look at the sentiment and context of the documents. And then our, our very popular one here as well, which is our image risk uh, machine learning model, which is designed to look for either adults or potentially violent images, able to click in here and quickly see what's going on with the incident. Again, if you do click into the actual risk itself here, we also do blur all the images. So if you do click into things and are looking around, you don't have to worry about accidentally running into anything here. And then here you'll see what it actually got flagged as. So in this case, it got flagged as potentially being a violent image here. And you would still be able to download that right from here, or you could go through and take those various actions on the, on the risks right from there as well.
There's a couple other features we do have, which are found actually out here, which is a, an ability to send reminders to yourself on certain risks. So that if this was something that I wanted to come back and look at it at, at a later date and time, I could go ahead and apply a reminder to this specific risk in question, or I could apply various labels to this risk as well. So if this is something that I'm still in the process of reviewing, or this is my responsibility, whatever the case may be, you, could, you can either have some out of the box labels or some custom generated ones which can then be applied to the specific specific risk in question to give you some quick visual indications of what's happening with that risk or who's looking at that or how it's being processed there. And then really tying that together are going to be the risk policies themselves. So if I come over here to the policy section, this one here, this social security number or credit card numbers leaving the org, this is a very, very popular policy. This is one that we have as an out of the box policy that's ready to go. And this is where you could set up warning messages if you are trying to train user behavior, try to get users to be better at not actually sharing things that contain sensitive information or sending things via email as well. So this warn user allows you to go ahead and send out a warning message to the end user. And you can see here, there's a little dialogue box at a that appeared here as well. So I can choose who I want to warn as well. So I can choose to warn the sender, the recipients or the CC. So in this case, I'd probably wanna just warn the sender of this email if that was the case. And then I could go ahead and customize the message body of that warning message. We also do have some out of the box message templates that are ready to go. And those can also be adjusted as well, but this is a way you can create a specific message just for this individual policy as well too. And you can also receive an immediate notification as well too when these warning message emails go out. Otherwise, our email notifications are batched together and sent out every uh, four hours. And they'll go to whoever's listed at this top field here and multiple people can be added here. Or you can also have, if there's one person who's gonna be managing specific policies, you can have just those people be listed here as well too. This is an overwrite field to allow you to send it just to those specific users who might be managing this policy for you. So some flexibility on who those alert notifications go to as well.